matter what hour your clock strikes here, it's always Halloween. And I'm always your haunted host, Luce Tomlin Brenner. In the last two episodes, we learned that Halloween first originated with the Irish Celts more than 2,000 years ago. We also discovered that before the Celts had roots in Ireland, they were a collection of tribes that inhabited much of Central Europe until the Romans, led by Julius Caesar in the first century, took over their land and killed them by the thousands. Failed attempts at securing control of the British Isles allowed the Celts to thrive there, so much so that many Celtic traditions remain evident there still. Sure, I've spent at least 20 minutes villainizing the Romans, but today I want to show you their cool side. <laughs> well, that's cool, baby. Their death-obsessed side. Oh, yeah. Before adopting Christianity in the 4th century CE, the polytheistic Romans had some gnarly Halloween-like celebrations because they held their dead in high regard as intermediaries between themselves and the gods. Remember in the first episode when we learned Pope Bonifacia consecrated the Roman pantheon and declared May 13th All Martyrs Day in the 7th century? Well, prior to the creation of All Martyrs Day, May 9th, 11th and 13th were ritual days known as Lemuria. Ovid, a first century Roman poet, traced Lumeria rites back to the very founding of Rome in the 8th century BCE. At midnight on each day of Lumeria, Romans performed rites to exorcise malevolent specters from their homes. These Lemuria spooks were named Lemurs also called larva, which sounds more gross than spooky. I also don't want immature insects in my house. Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. But it turns out the word larva comes from a Latin word meaning ghost or mask. And while we're having fun with etymology, cute fuzzy lemurs, one of my favorite animals, get their name from these chilling spirits too. The Roman lemurs were grotesque skeletal specters thought to wander the earth on the 9th, 11th, and 13th of May, haunting their living relatives and causing grave injury to anyone who crossed their path. Some believed they were lost souls, thieves, criminals, the executed and the damned, and those unable to afford a proper funeral like sailors lost at sea whose bodies could not be recovered and buried appropriately. Lemuria was held yearly to win the favor of these ghosts and keep them from haunting the household. Part of this ritual observance required the father of every family to rise at midnight, purify himself with fresh water, toss black beans or spit them from their mouth for the spirits to gather around and plea for their departure, Please, take these beans and go! Beans, 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 beans. According to Ovid, what they actually said was more like, These I cast, with these beans, I redeem me and mine. I'd leave a room if someone shouted that at me. Beans were considered the food of the dead, often given as funerary offerings, and some believe them to contain the souls of the departed. Lemuria was replaced by All Martyrs Day, which was then replaced by All Saints Day, which was eventually overshadowed by Samhain, which later became Halloween. So you can draw a through line from trying to win ghosts' favor with beans to trick-or-treating today. I'm so grateful beans were eventually replaced by candy, because I can't think of anything worse than a bunch of loose beans at the bottom of my trick-or-treat bag. Another ancient Roman celebration, Parentalia, didn't seem to survive Christianity. However, it does share some similarities with the Mexican Day of the Dead festivities. Parentalia was a Roman festival held in honor of the dead. It began at noon on February 13th and culminated on February 21st with a one-day festival called Feralia, 
during which offerings and gifts were placed at the graves of family members. Sadly, no account of the public rites of Feralia survives, although its prominence on public calendars indicates it was a major event. What we do have, however, is a downright chilling poem from Ovid describing a strange rite dedicated to Tacita, the goddess of the dead, which was performed on Feralia by an old woman surrounded by young girls. Three fingers tuck three incense lumps under a door where a tiny mouse built a hidden path. The hag then fastens enchanted cords with dark lead and rolls seven beans inside her mouth. And then she roasts on the fire the sewn head of the sprat, smeared in pitch and spitted with bronze rod. She also drops in wine. What remains of the wine she or her friends drink, although she drinks more. We have tied hostile tongues and our enemies' mouths, the hag shouts. Again, we see beans being used in a ritual commemorating the dead. According to the website History and Archaeology Online, the images of binding, sealing, and blocking suggests a rite of banishing and removing harm. All of this, plus the involvement of the silent goddess of death, suggests the Feralia was a right to guide the dead back to their proper place and see that they stayed there. Ovid noted the consequences Rome suffered when the rites of Parentalia were not observed one year due to war. Our ancestors left their tombs in the night's silent hour and wailed. The city streets and broad grassland howled, they say, with a hollow throng of shapeless souls. I don't know about you, but I gotta say I like the Romans a bit more this week than I did last week. Are you not entertained? Does your shapeless soul yearn to howl? Call into the All Hallows hotline at 802-532-3323. That's 802-532-DEAD. Or you can write me an eek mail at it's always Halloween Podcast at gmail.com. If you do, you may be featured on our Small Frights episodes, which come out every Friday. I'd love to hear what you want to learn about in the future. I'm also interested in hearing from people outside of America or outside of Christianity who grew up with different types of Halloween-like celebrations. It's Always Halloween is researched, written, and performed by me, Luce Tomlin Brenner. The editing, theme music, and sound design is by Pete Burns. Thanks, Pete. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at LTB Comedy and Pete at Mittenberries. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please subscribe and write us a little review so that other like minded ghouls can find us. Thanks so much for listening to It's Always Halloween. And come back next week if you're not too scared.